Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of the Guitar Souls podcast, the most epic of guitar products. How's it going, Mike? All right, man. How are you? Yeah, not too bad, not too bad. Same shit, different day. Mm -hmm. We have returned. We have returned to fill your ears full of all of the guitar-related rage. Uh, Yeah, and there's tons of things to talk about today. Actually, we're on a really tight schedule, so we're we're just winging it a little bit. We've got a few things uh, opened up in... uh, I was going to say Safari, but that's not Safari, is it? That's no, it's Chrome. It's Google Chrome. Why would I even say Safari? I don't use a Mac. Because you're a madman. Something wrong. That, with that's how you're. Brain. That's so hard. How hard you're winging it? Yeah. That you can't even get the right operating system. Yeah. You're a madman. So uh, what's been going on with you? How are you? Yeah, I'm not a bad man. I uh, had a, a bit of a personal business, as I'm sure you're aware. So for the listeners, uh, I had a bereavement in the family. Um, so I apologise. There's been so much of a delay in us coming back to you, but I had a couple of things I had to deal with. I'm sure you understand. Um, and hopefully we can just crack on with it. Yeah. Fortunately, we have a very understanding group of listeners um, that understand that the rage is the, that we bring forth, they're so taxing that sometimes we just need a rest afterwards. Sometimes. Like... <laughs> Weeks and weeks and weeks in a metastasis, just hypersleep. Yeah, yeah. There are only uh, a few, a few guaranteed things in life. One is death. One is taxes, and one is things will make. Yeah, things will make us rage. Masturbation makes us rage. That's what. <laughs> He's an onanist. He likes to pour his own tea. Yeah. So we've got a few things to talk about today. We're going to laugh at Slash because you know who wouldn't laugh at Slash? It's not as if we ever talk about Slash. No, never heard of him. <laughs> Total guitar, I've never heard of him either. No. Uh, Fender have released some guitars we'll talk about those it's not uh, as if we slag Fender I think the main thing that we'll probably end up talking about is relic to guitars and uh, what you think are about relic to guitars <laughs> yeah uh, for those who are listening and not watching I was making sick faces <laughs> we have some updates on the um, what they call pledge music stuff no, not good ones yeah not good updates uh, of course uh, we'll talk about thank you scientists because thank you scientists and we're going to look through some total guitar magazines so yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. why don't we uh, why don't why don't we let's jump in with the slash thing let's do it fuck it so this was just a headline that we thought was funny enough we well, just burst out laughing so go on Mike yeah so as you know we don't really like to uh, bad mouth or berate or insult or laugh at anyone really um Especially not Slash, you know, we never talk about him in Total Guitar and how he sucks the dick of Gibson and Total Guitar suck his dick, but uh, we found a beautiful headline posted four days ago on Ultimate Guitar. Slash reacts to Gibson's bankruptcy, says he didn't get some of the company decisions. That guy that's running Gibson now, I really, really like the GNR guitarist adds. When, when were you slagging Henry? Because I don't remember you ever saying anything about him in any capacity. Yeah. And what were those decisions that Gibson were making that you didn't quite get? Was it releasing endless amounts of Slash signature models that you'd never played? Mm-hmm. Including Epiphones? Or maybe we're looking at this from the wrong perspective. Maybe actually the thing he didn't get is he had like 30 other different signature models that he wanted them to release. And they're like, call it Slash. Maybe. Call it. Maybe. Yeah. It does like he's a, he's a corporate enjoyment. That's maybe the way I would word it. I don't know. So uh, let's read the uh, read the quote. So um, I think I was always aware of certain changes, not so much in Gibson proper. It was just that there were all these new divisions being added, amendments to the company that were unnecessary, stuff that I didn't really see the vision for. But I was like, eh, whatever, because it wasn't affecting what I do. But when I started to do more signature models with Gibson, I started to become more aware of the experimental stuff that they were doing with the electronic stuff, which was becoming a big part of the fabric of the brand. And I was like, I just don't get it. I don't need it. So I don't know why anybody else is going to need it. Uh, and then there's a lot of turnover happening in the last couple of years with some of the really key people who'd been at Gibson forever. And that's when things started to get a little weird. Uh, and then the inevitable happening. Uh, see, to be fair, I think the quote that was taken for the headline, as usual, kind of clickbait style, yeah. doesn't really do what you say in justice. Sure. I, I can see why he would be opposed to the idea of like I'm guessing he's talking about like the electric tuners and stuff because great an idea not great in any practical reasons yeah really. I don't think they they took off at all did they and I know that Gibson are obviously in a lot of trouble with the, the manufacturer or, or they're, they're still pending legal cases yeah yeah considering they, they were supposed to be on was every model or something by a certain point and uh, well that that didn't happen yeah, they didn't have for good for good reason. Yeah, for, for good reason. Yeah. It would be probably great for someone in the studio who's not too bothered about string tension um and just wants to keep changing tunings, but no. Yeah. 
no, no, not for me. So I know what you mean. Like, of course, there is a bit of dis- dishonesty in the in the title here. You could read that title and infer something slightly different from what was actually said. Yeah. But still, at the very root of it, Slash is criticizing Gibson for the electronic things that they were putting in the guitars and things that he just didn't need. And that still fits very nicely in with that idea of what, like all of those signature models. Mm-hmm. It wasn't publicly vocal against it. Yeah, he maybe even wasn't vocal against it towards Gibson. He maybe just bided his time to say something. Yeah, definitely uh, an interesting one. I hear uh, rumors that they're working on an album, but you know, who knows what Axel's like? You know, <laughs> how many years is that going to be? We should really place our bets. I'm not all that interested, to be completely nah. honest with you. Nah. I don't think, and this is oh, this <laughs> here comes the heat. Ready for it? Oh, <laughs> hot take. I don't think Slash has done anything good since. Maybe Slash's Snake Pit 2, the second one. You don't even like uh, Velvet Revolver? No. Okay, fair enough. No. I, don't, I wasn't big on it, but I think there's a couple of good songs. There's some There's some moments. I feel that the moments in Velvet Revolver that were were good and that there was always like that... You, th- you think it like Fall to Pieces. Yes. That was reasonably popular. They pushed yes. it as a hard single. Um, I mean... It's like a bastardization of Sweet Child. In terms of the structure, the intro, you've got the, the chords, the arpeggiated bit, the soft chorus builds up to the sorry, the soft verse builds to the big chorus. Slash comes in and plays plays the arpeggiated melody over the the back of the chorus. Like, yeah, it just You're not wrong, mm-hmm. but it's a different vibe of song. Yes. However, yes. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean Let, I, let's be honest though, like everything that Slash is gonna write is gonna sound like Slash. Yes. Which and I think that's the key problem. That <laughs> the 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 part that in Guns N' Roses that I absolutely love is uh, is Izzy. Mm-hmm. Izzy was a writing force in that band, and that's yeah, fair. If he's not there, it's not quite the same. On that note, that reminds me actually. I don't suppose you've watched the uh, uh, the Motley Crue documentary. No, it's on my playlist, but Netflix. I've not seen it yet. The Dirt. Yeah, yeah. Give it a go. When I, when I was talking to Blaney, he, he was saying, a good friend of mine, Ryan Blaney, hi Ryan, if you're listening, probably aren't, but hello. <laughs> um, he said he watched it and basically it was just a, not not just that, but it was more or less like an R-rated version of Bohemian Rhapsody. Yeah. Like the yeah. same kind of, obviously a lot of bands are going to have the same thing when it's coming out and talking about bands and building things, but yeah. he felt the majority of that was just to, to show the, the levels of madness and depravity the band got up to, whereas like Bohemian Rhapsody obviously showed them writing songs and mm-hmm. creating certain riffs and where things came from. Yep. Um, but I have heard it's good otherwise. It is. It's a weird one because uh, it, it is that it is that showing the depravity of the band. But for anyone out there that's read the book, I hate being one of those guys that's like the film was good, but it's not as good as the book. No, you don't. <laughs> that is you in essence. Well, because generally speaking, like I encourage people to watch films of mm-hmm. books and I do encourage people, people to watch this, but before even watching it, I've, I've read the book. I read the book when I was in college mm-hmm. and I, before watching the film, it's like, well, I know most of the stuff is not going to make it to that. Not going to make it to that um, film. Actually. So of all the things reading that book that stick in my, in my memory, mm-hmm. um, again from over a decade ago uh which again i knew would not be in the film was around that period where they're on tour with ozzy and they have a scene in the film where uh where ozzy snorts a line of ants off the floor and then he uh pisses all over the floor in the hotel and then uh hotel swimming pool and then starts licking his piss off the floor and then nikki six is like well i can top that and pisses on the floor and then goes to lick it but ozzy pushes him pushes him out of the way and licks up nikki's piss like that's funny, and you, you, yeah, I know you look mortified. You expect- not mortified, just like confused as to why you would think that's like cool to do, but because drugs. Yep. Yeah. Um. But so the the thing that I remember from the book was they, uh, it would have been Tommy and Nikki, I if memory serves me right, uh, when they were on tour around that period, uh, obviously sleeping with different women every night, but they had a, they were having a, a challenge. They were seeing who could sleep with the most women, without washing their dicks. And it went oh. on for weeks. Oh, yeah. And I remember that from the book. And I'm like, well, they're never gonna. How are they gonna put that in the? Oh, yeah. <laughs> but there you go. The no, no, I'm mortified. Yeah. No, no, I'm disgusted. Yeah. And uh, the the book. Yeah. Nasty. Nasty. The, the, the dot named book. after Tommy Lee's foreskin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I heard that the uh, the character that you most relate to from the film, maybe not the book, is Mick Mars. 
I mean, I do because I am a decrepit old man. That's constantly <laughs> feel like I'm just. Oh, uh, he can't um, even make that noise. He yeah. just stands in his top hat and sunglasses and plays riffs. Yeah, he is. Um, and fair play to Mick Mars. He he's a, he's certainly an interesting character in that film. I think if anything, he's he's under featured because yeah, that, that, he wasn't as wild as the rest of them. Well, that's that's what again Blaney said to me. I, I I've not seen it, so I'm just going by his. Mm. Like take on it, but he said that everyone else just comes across, especially Vince Neil, as an absolute dick. Yeah. But then Mick Mars just comes across as a guy who maybe get caught up in it, but doesn't quite take it as far as anyone definitely. else. Yeah, definitely. Which might be true because everybody else is still wild, and he has been tamed by fucking reality. Yeah, and he's guy. also the best part of ten years older than all of them. Yeah. Um, debilitating illness. And... That's what I mean. Like he seems to be the one that's been struck by it. Yeah. The other guys were substance abusers for the for the party, whereas he was a drinker for the pain kind of thing. Hmm. So yeah, though the moments he is in the film are, are absolutely excellent. So um, yeah, I did I did enjoy it, and I have seen some people bitching about it, but um, I, I thought about it because Slash appears in it very briefly. You see him um, passed out on a couch. Do you want to hear a guilty pleasure in mine? Go on. I fucking love Rockstar with Mark Wahlberg. I hate that film. Why? We All Die Young is a great song. Yeah. Some... The rest is pretty pish. Yeah, so I'll, I'll tell you why I hate that film. Um, because it's it's kind of a similar vibe to, well, what The Dirt is. Like, it's showing you the, the behind the scenes. Oh, can you believe it? Can you believe what they get up to? Yeah. But it's super tame. Oh, of course it is. Yeah. The worst thing you see in that is him getting his nipple pierced. Yeah. By Jennifer Aniston yeah, yeah. with a potato and a bit of ice. Yeah. Um, but what what it really comes down to is it falls into that old typical filmmaking trope of in, intro, middle, and end that yeah. you have to have, and the and the drama between the B and the C section of a film is for some reason two extremely important characters fall out for some reason, mm-hmm. and then there's the lull of them being apart, and then the happy feel good moment is towards the end when they come together. Rockstar isn't about being a rock star. Rockstar's a fucking love story. That's it's a rom com. Yeah. It's a, it's a chick flick. Netflix don't like us saying that. It's a chick flick that they tried to make super appealing for the for the man with the Zach Wild in it. So yeah, you're there not wrong. Good, but there are some good moments. That's why I said it was a guilty pleasure. Yeah. And to be honest, <laughs> my guilty pleasure is just watching the film and ignoring everything until we all die young happens, and yeah. ignoring the rest until Miles Kennedy appears on stage. Yeah, Timothy Spool's in it, and he's fantastic in it. So he's the bad. Timothy manager. Spool. Yeah. It's been a while since I've seen it. I mean, there's probably like. Now that I'm a bit more mature, if I watched it again recently, I'd be like, oh, I know him. He was yeah. in that. Yeah, yeah. I know him. He was in this. Yeah. But it's been a while. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> Rockstar. <laughs> don't, don't you laugh at me. What we still you? need to sit down and watch Detroit Rock City. We do. Which is the Kiss film. Mm-hmm. Have you ever seen Still Crazy? No. No, Still Crazy is another film about like a, an aging rock band and Billy Conley plays one of the roadies. See, I've talked to, to Marcus about this. Like, mm-hmm. a, a, I know we don't like reaction videos, but watch-alongs. Um, are, are good fun we should do this for things like Still Crazy I'm and totally down Detroit Rock City literally just sit here watch the film with headphones on people can't Get see drunk. it and hear it yeah but other people can't see it and hear it but they can put the film on at the same time mm-hmm. and the two will sync up so they'll see us reacting to, to the actual film that's, that sounds good if, if you guys are into that please let us know because that yeah. would be a, a lot of fun and I would definitely get drunk for that and I think you should get drunk too we can drink a lot of whiskey and probably regret it the next day yeah Probably regret it before we even post anything. Yeah. Yeah. On that note, though, guys who are watching or listening to this, uh, what are your favourite films featuring or focused on the rock and roll lifestyle? Mm, um, good question, Levi. Definitely. Yeah, because I'm happy to add those to a list of, of films that we should uh, we should talk about watching. Totally. Yeah. Um, so there you go. Slash, he can, he can go away. Um, he can. He can. He absolutely can. Talking of monstrous quotes, let's go on to monstrous guitars. Um, oh, look at this. Now, you said you'd play one of these. I, you know what? There's something about that that I actually quite dig. I shouldn't, but I do. So for those listening rather than watching, what I have on screen right now from uh, Music Radar is Fender's 66. It's called the 66. And it's a Fender jazz bass, but turned into a guitar. Yep, with Strat and Tele appointments. And it comes from the alternate reality line of guitars. I've not seen any other ones. But to describe this, imagine a jazz bass, a natural... Uh, there's a couple of different models and Levi's cycling through them now. Um, <laughs> but basic rundown is, yeah, like a, a jazz body with a single uh, in the neck, a single coil in the middle, a humbucker on the bridge, a uh, six-point st- classic style tremolo. The, still the same kind of uh, jazz control plate with the pickup switch on the bottom horn yep. and then just a standard kind of big headstock, 70 style I think 70 that is, stock, yeah. um, strat neck, 
22 frets by the looks of it. Yeah. it that's not much of a description. It definitely doesn't sound anywhere near as cool as it looks. So you, but you do I that. quite like it. I, I like the Sonic Blue one. I think that's actually really fucking cool. Yeah. There's something about the proportions just make it look a bit, a bit I, off. Yeah. It, it might be a case of uh, maybe if they switch the headstock to the... But no. I think See if you that held it. side stick, that bottom bit just sticks out a bit too much. If you rounded that off more... But that's, that's the jazz body. Yeah, I was going to say, you round it off more, you've got a strap. <laughs> it's, yeah. It's also... It looks as if they took the jazz body and put like a Telecaster bottom horn on it, uh, which is why it looks slightly off to me. So uh, I'm just going to bring up the alternate reality series just Let's so do we it. can uh, look at look at some of those <laughs> with five new weirdos. Thanks, Nam. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so there you go, the '66. I mean, what is that? What even is that? Interesting. That can go in the bin <laughs> instantly. Yeah, uh, I always love Fender's attempt at doing a twelve-string headstock, and and that was that was that was it. Stop it! Oh wow! An electric ukulele. Is it? Or is it a tenor bass or a mandolin? I think that's a tenor guitar. Yeah, no. tenor, tenor telly. No. Put it in the bin. Wow. I mean, yeah, absolutely put it in the bin, but <laughs> good on them for trying something absolutely ridiculous. What, which sure is a tenor guitar then? I should know that, but... I think you know that would be violin. Do you know it be fifths? No. No? No, just be tuned up. It comes from tenor banjo. Right. Um. Yeah. I thought no banjos are tuned to open tunings. Open G. Yeah. Yeah. A tenor banjo, which then evolved into tenor guitar. Tenor banjo was what was played in those Dixieland jazz bands. Geek. Yeah. H- historian. <laughs> <laughs> and that evolved into eventually tenor guitars. Historian. I've never yeah, I've never owned a tenor guitar, or even played one. I've seen a couple in like vintage shops. Um I think it'd be quite cool to mm-hmm. to have a tenor guitar, but you know, I have too many guitars. I'd never use a fucking tenor guitar, would I? But <laughs> And unfortunately, they cost a little bit more than a tenner. I was going to say, I bet you could buy a guitar for a tenner if you went to the right place. <laughs> That's enough of that. So, um, yeah, so I would describe those as... Just just when we're talking about sp- spending money and buying things, for just over a tenner, you could have one of these beautiful t-shirts here. Look look at that. Come on. Help support us. Come on. All right. Teespring, the link will be below. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Hey, come on. Uh, right. Buy yourself something nice. That was a good ad break. I enjoyed it. Let's talk Game of Thrones. <laughs> I haven't seen any of the new season yet, have you? No. No, no, no. Will no. you watch it? Yeah, yes. Good. What, Again, what shout you... out to Ryan Blaney. Ryan has a tattoo on his chest of the House Stark. Okay. A uh, sigil. Is it? No, a Lannister, sorry. A Lannister sigil. Okay. Mad man. It's pretty cool. Um, <laughs> it's pretty fucking good to be fair to him. Yeah, so I, I wasn't into Game of Thrones uh, up until like season five maybe when season six came out i was uh-huh. like right i should probably probably sit through and watch all of these and uh seasons one two and three I, I have things on when i'm working so it didn't it didn't really grab me until around season four and i was like cool i like the violence um is this where your warhammer and Dungeons and dragons and magics came from maybe i think it has because that's like it's like a gateway drug into the the, the, the folklore world yeah so um what i'm planning on doing is watching it all again Yep. For listening, listeners, we are going... There's a reason behind this. Um, <laughs> it does relate to guitars. Um, Somehow. I'm planning on watching it all again. I just bought it all on Amazon Prime recently, so I've, mm-hmm. they're, they're queued up, ready to watch, because Hayley's not watched them. So I'm going to watch them with Hayley. She's read some of the books. Um, and then I will watch the, the final season. Mm-hmm. So why are we talking about this? Well, Fender, absolute madman, <laughs> have unveiled three new, and I'll quote... Absolute sh- units. <laughs> ...jaw-dropping Game of Thrones custom shop guitars to be fair is true yeah I mean jaw dropping whether you agree jaw dropping good or jaw dropping bad they definitely catch your attention so the House Stark one Telecaster I absolutely absolutely dig that I do not dig the $25,000 price tag or the lack of a 12th fret only but they've gone for a tramp stamp on fret one (laughs) yep the dire wolf signal only (laughs) so um, yeah wow I mean, I mean that's pretty co- it's not 25 grand but it's cool by the way like that looks almost reliced which is a good yeah we'll come, come yeah, yeah well I'll look yeah. at the other ones first but we, yep. yeah we'll go straight into relics after that so that's it's only the bridge though the bridge seems to be tarnished a bit but that goes with the look the idea being that it's almost grey um or grey scale that 
So Blaney has has a, a Lannister. No, sorry, it's the house Stark. It's I'm the Stark. Shit. It's yeah. the okay. Dire Wolf. Yeah. On his chest. Yeah. Can't get on board with this. I I love the fact that in this photo though it's got the reflection of the the bar. Um, and that, yeah. that must have been cleaned to perfection. You know what? Like I, I wouldn't own that, but I think it's majestic. I think the problem with all of these is in terms of the the way the the, the emblems are. That looks like an axle bad water strut. These are designed to be hung up. You know, you can't that telecaster. You can never play it because then you've got a wolf looking at the floor. Much like the majority of the uh, Game of Thrones characters, they they were all uh, written in to be hung. Maybe <laughs> drawn, quartered, shot, stabbed with arrows, set fire, brains broken, trampled, set fire, castrated, castrated. Well done, Mike. I enjoy that. Uh, so the yeah, the Lannister Jag is uh, thirty thousand dollars. So it's a lot 20, of money. To be fair, it's got twenty four karat gold leaving with heralded design on both the front and back. Bang in headstock. That is pretty fucking cool. When you compare that to what they put on the Telecaster, also that is banging. It's it, it's quite in line with Scotland. When you think about it. Because you've got the line rampant on it. <laughs> you know what I mean? So what you're saying is we need a crowdfund in order to buy this to make it the official guitar souls. F- offend- anyone from Fender is listening, if you can send me one of these and I'll send you it back, I will stand outside naked, hold it above my head and shout freedom. Freedom, yeah. We can even go to Bannockburn and do it if you want. I'm we English and it- I'll do it too. No, you'll not. No, you will not. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> you're in England now. I've told everybody this. When you cross that threshold into my house, you're in... Uh, a sovereign part of England. Uh, yeah. No. Uh, I'm not crazy on this Targaryen one. No, but it looks like an actual bad water strap. You can't really... Like, it's it's quite hidden. That inlay is cool as fuck. If that is as well done as it looks as intricately on that, that is cool as fuck. You would expect it to be well done because it's $35,000. It's even more expensive than the, than the Jag. I don't fully understand how that's that expensive. Strat also boasts an etched neck plate that's finished with thin lacquer over a custom dragon glass black paint. That, I get the impression that that, that finish underneath the, the lacquer is going to be something like, see when you see real carbon, like proper carbon fibre weave, yep. and it's got that kind of scaly look. Mm-hmm. I think they've probably done that to make it look almost scaly. Right. Okay. How much that would cost and whether it's actually carbon fibre, I don't know. I'm just guessing from what I've seen, but... yeah. Fair enough. Uh, okay, so let's move on to Relics. Mm-hmm. Speaking of scrap guitars. So this comes up via, uh, again, Music Radar. They just did a rundown of the uh, best budget Relic guitars. Ooh. Spoilers, there's no such thing as a good budget Relic electric guitar. It simply isn't. When they're done cheap, they look cheap. Um, and just just don't buy a Relic guitar. So we've if got you want the, something uh, worn, we'll get there. Out. We'll get there, Mike. No. I just want to tell them what their options are. Sorry. The LTD TE254 uh, Monstrosity. Um, the Vintage Icon V6. No, thank you. Vintage does all right. The Court Sunset TC. I feel that that's maybe a little bit better done, but it seems to be just the body. The headstock looks fine, so no thank you. The Washburn HB36. It doesn't really look relic. It just looks like it looks. <laughs> it Somebody's like, wiped some tea bags on it. It looks like, yeah, like a, a salvage, like a ship salvage guitar. Um, don't have these on screen because they're not really worth talking about. But yeah, so Relic Guitars. I get the impression you're not a fan, Mike. For the reasons you say, cheap ones do not look good and the expensive ones you are paying someone money to break your guitar or to damage your guitar or to somewhat give it the look that it's been used well, played hard and and seen some, some use. I just don't get it. Unless you're going to do it yourself. Now, there are exceptions to the rule. There are guitars that have been relicked by people or have came relicked that look really good. Mm-hmm. I'm going to try and find a Fender one I saw a few years ago that was really, really cool. Um, well, on, on I don't know if I've mentioned him on the podcast, but I always talk really highly of Carson Hess and his work. Uh, he makes incredible, incredible relics. Mm-hmm. Um, pricey, but yeah. I can't really disagree with what you've said there. Mm-hmm. Cheap relics look shit. Expensive relics cost a fortune, and you're essentially just paying someone to to break your guitar. Kick fucker it, yep. Um, yeah. Which I'm not down for. Right, here is an example of one that I think is pretty fucking cool, right? If you would quickly on the computer, look up this, it's, and for those that are listening, you can obviously look ahead as well. It's a Fender Stratocaster 57. Heavy relic. And funnily enough, 
Levi's. A L E V I S. Oh yeah. As I'm sure you know how to spell your name. This one? Yes. I think that as a relic is pretty fucking cool, but it's a one off and I bet it cost a fucking fortune. Good job on the, the relic and on the uh, on the neck. Yep. The body looks like it's been relic properly. There's not any big horrible chips that make it really unobvious. That's like general actual wear. Mm -hmm. You get some on the front as well, not so much as on the corners, but it's also been worn where he's obviously been supposed to have been playing it at the top of the body. Yeah. The pit guard has been worn yeah, so correctly. cleverly, yeah, yeah. including where you think Around your finger would box. usually sit. Yeah. Look, even the pickup uh, covers are worn through. The metal's tarnished, but not in a way that makes it look yep. like it's actually just been fucking dulled by someone, yep. right? And it just it's just that to me is perfect. That's beautiful. Yeah, so well done. It's got the character of a guitar that someone has loved and played and had for years, even though it isn't. <laughs> but that is, as I say, the exception for me. And I've no doubt you're going to find something ridiculous. Yeah. Was it Carson that built the plate for you? Carson built the uh, the plate on my on my um, telly, yeah, my Gatton telly. I have seen some of his work and it looks incredible. So fair play to the big man. The agent wow. on the neck, like that's not good story. Those oh flaking away on the he does that with a scalpel, just individually flaking away little Holy tiny bits of shit. tiny bits of paint. Um, wow. I, he's an artist, an artist in the in the truest sense. That's a restoration as well. Wow. Sound sounds not gonna do us much much good. Getting the check in in the beautiful man in the in the lacquer. Um, Let me picture Jason Becker there. A good wee nod. That's nice. Yeah, getting that aging right is a so hard nice to do. Art form. Um, and that's really what it comes down to. I don't generally like relics, but if it's a relic telecaster that looks original, you're all over it. When it's done to the to the right standard, absolutely, I love a relic. That, um, I mean, that's what, that's attention to detail. You just it's, it's art. It's yeah. someone who's doing it to do it right, not just to go. Let's add five hundred quid on and punch someone's guitar a bit of room. Press that mute button on that. Yeah. The hair squad. <laughs> That's pretty good. But see, it's the attention to detail. Yeah. Like he's... Everything's relic, but relevant to how it would be. Yes. Round about the pickups, where you expect your hand to sit, sweat to form, fingers to sit on. Fucking flaking is ridiculous. Like where the pick's going to hit. Those tiny wee dents and chips, the kind of things that you go, fuck, I didn't mean that. Yeah. And it happens. Even the jack plate. Yeah. Yeah, scratches on it and, and shit. Discard on the inside as well. Like, yeah. it's just... Hyper attention to detail. Yeah. Take a bow, sir. Take a bow. Yeah, uh, he just does absolutely incredible work. So, yeah, going back to what I was saying, um, it's one of those things, like, you either have to spend a lot of money mm -hmm. or don't spend any money. You will see a lot of people saying that, and I was concerned that you were close to saying it, which is just relic it yourself over years and years of playing it. It's not relic, that's just playing it. Yeah. it uh, Like... That when people suggest that your guitar should uh, like it earns the right to look like that over time, I get it, but it's also not strictly true because it's it's not possible anymore. When you buy a modern, when you buy a modern Fender Strat or a Fender Tele that's got a poly finish on it, mm -hmm. those things are encased in a shell of lacquer. Oh, and paint. Like, yeah, I the, tried to sand through a Squire body, and it took nearly yeah. four hours. Yeah, with an electric fucking sander. Yeah. I actually burnt the motor out in one before. That's how bad they, yeah. like, it, it, fucking, like, genuinely, like, that much paint and lacquer. Yeah. yeah. And they just don't, they're designed and built in a way to keep them looking new for as long as humanly possible. They don't discolour in the same way that, like, a nitro finish does. Yeah. So my telly, I'll bring it up on camera, which is relic. Um, it's not a, It's not an amazing relic. This is just a Fender Roadworn series. Um... I've got it a little bit more beat up just from from playing it. Mm -hmm. uh, the thing that really impressed me about this is just the checking and the lacquer there. But that's, you can't, I was going to say you can't do that. That's a chance thing. You you put your nitro finish on it. You then heat the guitar up. 
have it warm and you and wait then, to see what happens and then put it somewhere cold mm. and see what happens or get it really cold then put it somewhere warm and see what happens the other one I've heard of is people with you know inlays on Les Pauls like the big block inlays yes the, those disc colouring is leaving the guitar in the sun with a towel over the rest of the guitar except the fretboard yep yeah that would make sense um I tried to relic it a bit further myself, like I've on the fretboard. I've tried to scratch away at the fretboard. I did that with a, with a flathead screwdriver. Mm-hmm. Um, not really the best or most convincing job, but I think it's because it's, it's the lines are too like straight and obvious. For those that can't see it, it's just it's still a good job. But Levi's done it for his sake, not anyone else's. Yeah, I was just having fun. I like beating. The, I like a. I remember I saying here about that guitar, like, you don't really look after that, you're like, no, and then you bit it. Yeah. Like, you genuinely left teeth marks in the finish. Yeah. And I was like, all right, okay, I yeah. guess that's it, that guitar. It then. fell over the other day, like, straight down, and, um... Like, Didn't break your headstock off because it's not a fucking Gibson. And did that. <clears throat> Sorry, excuse me. Like, that's a proper impact on the on the headstock. I can see that, just push the wood in. Um, but, that, that's but again, yeah, natural cool. looking. why not? Like that's that's just what happens. You would expect that from a, from a guitar. So this this wasn't particularly expensive. This is sort of that middle ground of if you get the right one, you're getting better than American. It's it's you know it's I think it's a case of heavy relicking is what can look bad. Mm-hmm. This is light relicking. This guitar is lightly relicked, lightly aged is a better way of looking of describing it. Um, yeah, that makes more sense to me than like. Heavy relic. You need to spend a lot of money to get a nice relic. Yep. So not because something, it takes a lot of time. So I mean, I say not something. It's something that I'm toying around with the idea of of doing. But why? I don't need more guitars, man. I constantly want them. Spend find myself just sat at night, two o'clock in the morning, just looking at new guitars. But just just relic your custom mayonnaise. That's that would be the that that's be the, the one into that. You'd have to have balls to do that, wouldn't you? You'd have to have no brains. Yeah. And lots of balls. <laughs> not in a good way. I'm talking like swollen probably should be amputated testicles just attach it to the back of your car your lovely new car um via a chain and just drive it down the road that's that's how that, that wouldn't really that would ruin yeah <laughs> a heavy a heavy ruining yeah <laughs> really like the real road worn cds yeah <laughs> <laughs> hang it out the window and drag it but as usual the question is what do you guys think of relic guitars i'm really interested um I'm genuinely interested because i know that it, it is a real divider in the guitar community, and I would say it's probably 70% of people hate them, and 30%, that's just a guess. I think um, those people that really fight for, for Relic and are really passionate about it, uh, like myself, I love a good Relic guitar, but really it's just because I can't buy a 53 telly, and that's what I want, a 53, not a 52, I know people are sitting and thinking, why would you want a 53, surely you want a 52 from the first, no, no, I want a 53 telly, because that was the, Danny Gatton's telly was a 53 telly. So I want a fifty-three. Exactly. That's what I do. <clears throat> Sorry, to clean, that's what I do to clean the headstock. Uh, <laughs> let's do that. Please do it. No. <laughs> Fucking nightmare fuel. Yeah. <laughs> so fifty-three telly, uh, but I can't afford a fifty-three telly. I would love something that is authentically aged. Yeah. That would be. Yeah. Yeah. Who knows? One day. Uh, but I can't afford that. So instead, I have, like to have something that is pretend expensive. Um, but that that actually works because if I had something that was genuinely expensive. I wouldn't fucking play it. So you're getting away with it. I see what you did there. Da 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 da. That's becoming like a, a trademark. I think. Just about I. I think like a soundboard and start playing bites in between like <laughs> shitty radio hosts. I have considered editing them in when I'm editing the the podcast, but I, <laughs> I can't be bothered to listen to the whole podcast when I'm yeah. editing it. So, so not like anyone it. else. Yeah. <laughs> no, we do have people that listen all the way no, through. We do. So um, yeah, there we go. Relic guitars. Um, what what do people think about them? I'm yeah. And the answer is no. Put them in the bin. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, let's talk about something a little bit more positive. Thank you, scientist. Thank you, scientist. Thank you, scientist. Our good friends mm-hmm. over in Thank You Scientist. I've known Tom for. I, <laughs> this is a funny thing to say. I have been a fan of Thank You Scientist now for longer than most of the members have been in the band. <laughs> um, yeah, new album. I'm such a hipster. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I I, would, I was going to say I, I knew them before they were famous, but they're still not still not famous. Uh, but for those that are unfamiliar, Yet. you know, you have to go and check out Thank You Scientist. Um, they are in the midst of releasing a new album. There are lots of teasers going up for a new album. Um, I have it. I can't really tell much. Can't really say anything about it because I don't know what they have and haven't announced about it. Um, but it's bound to kick your dick off, knowing Levi. Uh, it's a belter. 
um, an absolute belter. Uh, the thing I said to Tom when I was talking to him, he asked what I thought about the album, was um, I was honest with him. I said, you know what, mate? Like I've never said this before, but with your first two albums, the, there were on each of them there was a tr- there were tracks that I would skip over. And that would be um, Suspicious Waveforms and mm-hmm. Rude Goldberg Variations, okay. which are the instrumental tracks. Yep. Because I'm like, when I listen to Thank You Scientist, you're you're a band, and I, I want to listen to songs rather than rather than music. And I think the most interesting thing about them for me is the way everything plays between each other. It's mm-hmm. not like they don't rely on each other so much as they all fill out to make it bigger than yep. it would be if it was just one instrument doing everything. Yep. Well. There is an instrumental on the new album that absolutely kicked the dick off me, and it yes. was my it was my favorite moment of the album. Yes. Yeah, I, it played and played and played, and I was expecting vocals to come in. They didn't. I just kept getting more and more drawn into it, and then it finished. I was like, you know what? That was the winner. I absolutely love that. So, yeah, that's what I would say. Um, mm. They're an interesting bunch of guys. Really, really nice, friendly guys. Uh, if you head on over to their YouTube now, they have just uploaded. A video, a live video of FXMLDR, which they recorded live. Was it 100? 150 piece? 120 piece. 120 piece drum band. Corps. Yeah, drum corps band. Um, so horns and, and everything. Uh, to be fair, I can play some clips of it, can't I? I can get away with that uh, if I turn that down. I hope they demonetize you. Yeah, I don't mind. Uh, <laughs> Shall we unmute this? Um, no, 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 no that's, that's fine like that. Uh, we don't need to hear it. We've we've heard it. Um, yeah, so if we just have a look over here, here are the guys with a very large group of people playing with them. And the fun thing about this, I'm going to talk over it, of course. The fun thing about this is this is all recorded at... Uh, is it Sun Studio? What do they call the place? It's recorded in a, a studio where it's solar powered. Everything is, is recorded with the power of the sun. Because, you know, environment. And just as so you're aware, that also makes all the music happy. Even yeah. minor chords are happy. <laughs> Diminished happy. Augmented happy. Single notes happy. I mean, I, I'll edit the music so it's lower than us talking, so I won't worry about that. Um, yeah, I can only imagine how much fun it would be to play with a band as big as that. Absolutely nuts. Must be absolutely amazing. Especially them playing your music. Not like doing a cover. That's pretty silly, isn't it? Yeah. Here, guys, here's this song that, that I wrote. Here's sheet music for 120 people. Let's do this. Absolutely amazing. And then just crack on and play it. Yeah. Just Love. silly. Love them. Must be a lot of fun. And, you know, straight. I don't know why they're wearing what they're wearing, but, you know, that's Tom. <laughs> Tom all over, right there. There he is with his. With his Vigier and his Soldano. And his fantastic shorts. Yeah. <laughs> Are you laughing at? How's it rude? Just, Look at those socks, man. Just just all of it. Those uh, Golden Girls it. t-shirt, the looks of things. So what we should really do Beautiful. is we should bring up the uh, Terraformer pre-order infomercial sponsored I mean, by Cream Co. It should probably be called Terrifier. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we're going to play this uh, and laugh along as it happens. And encourage people to go and. Okay. I've I've pre warned Mike about this. We we watched some of this before. They taught us how to love. They taught us how to love. And now they're back to teach you how to cream. It's Terraformer by Thank You Scientist. Where were you when you first heard "Feed the Horses"? When did you first slow down? I think that's the Sims. Well, now there's Terraform. That suit looks really weird. Terraform. I wonder why. For some reason. Terraform. Is he really standing with all those gold Gold dollar signs falling behind him? And I'm a nude man. And we're here to tell you about the brand new two CD collection. (laughs) I was asking Levi if he thought those were stab wounds, bullet wounds, or medical sutures. (laughs) The fun thing about this, I don't know if Tom has mentioned this publicly yet he was hoping that people would find it um i'm gonna drop this now for people that are watching oh um, this is a this is a really funny video but it'd be really really funny to see a completely uncensored version of this wouldn't it where would someone where would if you wanted to upload a video that had naked people in it where what website would you upload that to go and find it people 
I, I, I wouldn't even know where to look for naked people Sleepless online. Yeah. I just wouldn't. Me twice. neither. I'm married. I, I mean, I would imagine there would be some sort of hub check my email. of places where you could Is upload that... pornographic mm -hmm. material. Mm -hmm. or, or, or there'd be plenty of loads. Um, For a limited time, you can pre order. Maybe, pre maybe. Look like how raging he looks. Damn it. For a limited time, you can oh. pre order the comprehensive. His nipples are as big as my penis. Nice ass. That, they've been watching far too much Tim and Eric. It's just. It, it's insane, and I love it. I absolutely love it. Signed full score of one song and two father and son trading cards. Get them while they're hot. Hot, hot, hot. Again, for those listening, there is a red naked man on, on the screen right now. Because why not? Hmm. Why not? It's cool though. I have spoken to Tom. I've spoken to the guys and they are safe. They are okay. That's good. And I would also recommend people phone the phone number. We have people standing by. One eight. 33 BRGNBOY is not considered to meet the standards of a legal business entity in the state of New Jersey. And that was that. By not legally responsible for over cleaning. Yeah. So we're going to do a listening session at some point and check out the album together, I'm sure, but yeah, thank you scientists. Absolutely buzzing for that. Um that is one of my highlights. Uh, there is there are lots of other new music things that are, are dropping. Just recently, Keith Mara has dropped uh, an album. I've not heard it. I have also not heard it, but it's on my list of things to get around to I will probably, to. Have you listened to the new Periphery? Uh, I was just going to say, also a new Periphery. Again, I haven't had time to listen to any of it oh, yet. Oh, Levi. I've not even had time to fully listen to the Thank You Scientist album because it's long. Really long. And work gets in the way. But, you know, Thank You Scientist, uh, I need to get through the rest of that. Then I need to get on to Periphery's Hail Stan. Yes, you do. Um, you So you've heard it? Yes, yeah. you do. Yeah, you like? Yes, you do. Okay. It's very good. Like, I'm, I'm going to just be honest, and maybe this is a hot take, but the first single, it's the second track, Blood Eagle, I think it's called, is probably the weakest track on the album. Right. In my opinion, because the rest of it has got some fucking incredible bits in it. Like, minted riffs, great guitar tones, cool as fuck solos but that track to me is just like I don't know it's, it, it's like it's missing the element of what makes Periphery Periphery which is they can have organised chaos and madness but there's still some melody through it mm -hmm. and that one it's almost like they've went right we, we, don't, we just want to be completely atonal and just not go with what we usually go so maybe it's the adventure outside their comfort zone maybe I'm wrong mm -hmm. doesn't make it a bad track but in comparison to the rest like that album is fantastic. The thing I uh, have really, really enjoyed about seeing the build-up to the release of the album is studio clips and just how much Misha seems to be using like Evertunes, Evertune Bridges. Um, I know Evertune's featured quite heavily on, on the album. Um, and the reason I find this really interesting is not just because I have Evertunes and I like Evertunes, but because to me it's a great example of just how influential Periphery are on the scene because in the past Misha has had some reasonably negative comments about well I wouldn't say negative comments but obviously he had that minor signature model that that had an Evertune in it mm -hmm. and he wasn't crazy on it and I know a bunch of guys around periphery played the guitar and they also weren't crazy on that guitar mm -hmm. and it put them off Evertunes and then of course word goes around on the internet that Evertunes aren't all that great so when i started using evertunes i had a lot of people saying yeah but they're they're, they're just not that good are they i love the internet the internet yeah, is so good yeah a million people with opinions on one thing they've never touched yes not yes. that we're any better i mean it's you and i that are literally just giving our opinion on things that we aren't involved in being wanks <laughs> but we are the guitar souls so we have some sort of creative right yeah we're, we're allowed to do that <laughs> Um, but now it seems that people are coming round to the idea of Evertune a little bit more. Um, My first exposure was you having one and having a shot of yours. And I was like, this is a solid bit of kit. Yeah, it's, it's one of those things. Like, I love it. I absolutely love the Evertune. Would I only have Evertune guitars? No, definitely not. No. Am I happy that I've got one there? Yes, absolutely. I if, mean, for, for tracking stuff, like, of course you would. Yeah. Um, I saw that Ola England has released a bunch of new models and, you know, he's putting Evertunes on a lot of things. He's got an 8-string with Evertune mm. now. So, um, again, I'm not a big 8-string guy. Obviously, I have an 8-string. It's 
just there. With an Evertune in it, funnily enough. With an Evertune in it. And the Evertune fixes everything that I hate about eight strings. That low string just constantly going sharp when you hit it hard, like that's not an issue. So for anyone that's looking to go into the land of eight string, mm -hmm. I would highly, highly, highly suggest that you consider a Evertune for you as the option. Yes. Now that's not an easy thing for me to say. I can't just say go out and buy an uh, eight string with an Evertune on it because there's not all that many um, eight strings on the market with Evertunes on them. Okay. ESP did the Eclipse one. Mm -hmm. um, I don't even know if they still make that, but now Ola has announced that one. That's cool. Did they? Did any of the Andy James models come eight string? I know either nope. six and a seven, and nope. both of them were Evertune, weren't they? Uh, yes. Hmm. But yeah, no, no eight string. Andy's not an eight guy. And Andy's, unlike Slash, Andy won't put out something with his name on it unless he likes it. Burn. Sick burn. Yeah. So um, Apply ointment to the burn. Yeah. Direct. So lots of new music. I'm <clears> sure there's tons of other new music -y type things to to listen to. But I, I haven't yeah. listened to too much new stuff. Periphery was the first one that really caught my attention, to be honest. Um, I'm trying to think. There was probably one or two other albums I was really dying to hear, but haven't caught my attention. It, it annoys me the sheer amount of new music there is that I I'm like cool I can't wait to get around to listening to that. Why would that annoy you? Because it annoys me. There's not enough time. It it draws attention to how fast everything slips by, <laughs> and it applies to to all areas of of life. Like I'm just getting around to playing Red Dead Redemption Two now. Mm -hmm. I got that for my birthday last year. Like this, now's the only time I've had the the chance to actually get on and play it, and it's the same like. I must have like 10, 15 great games that I've still not got around to start playing because there's just not enough time and more games are coming out. Same thing applies to music. Same thing applies to films. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, like I'm only just getting around to watching the second season of Westworld right now, which I love for the record. Maybe more than Game of Thrones. It's better. Yeah. I am all. So, um, yeah, there we go. New music. Uh, on the note of new music, do you know what new music might not be coming? Well, Generation X. Yeah. Sadly. Speaking of 8-string, Toes and Abassi, um, Zach Wilde, Stephen Vidalheim. I believe that's what that's short for. Vidalheim, is that right? Leviathan. Yeah, that works. <laughs> uh, <laughs> when I was younger, um, a bunch of people... Like who I played in in a band with, I was never a Steve Vai fan. I never have been a Steve Vai fan. Okay, um, and they knew that. They absolutely knew how much I hated like uh, most of Steve's music. It's, it's funny you say that because it took me a long time to appreciate what he was doing as well. I always thought Satriani had a better like grasp on melody, but it took a long while for me to realise that that's only because it's like simple radio friendly melody yep. used most of the time, mm -hmm. and then Vai's like just being Steve Vai. Yeah. Uh, so for a bunch of band-related promotional things, they would often put my name down as Levi, as in L-E-E-V-A-I. <laughs> ah! <laughs> oh, oh, never amused, never amused. Uh, anyway, yeah, so uh, Vi, Malmsteen, and that's uh, Nuno Bettercourt, right? I think so, yeah. So let's read this statement. Pledge well, Music, Generation X. Before we do so, we'll give the, the readers a wee recap -y. Or the readers, sorry, the listeners... Uh, yeah. Viewers, sorry. Um, Pledge Music, for those of you who haven't tuned in or maybe have forgotten, is a online, um, I, I want to say a, a donation site, but it's not really. It's like basically bands can set it's targets. Crowdfunding. Yeah, crowdfunding is the right term. Sorry. Um, and I'm totally brain blank there after. Let me explain it then. Um, yeah, so crowdfunding, and most of the time, um, these will be for albums, but can be also be for merchandise and special. Uh, pre-orders etc basically help raise uh, funds and revenues for bands to go ahead and record and do everything they can and it's come under quite a lot of criticism recently because most of the bands who have money pledged are not getting the funds mm. and if memory serves correctly one of the ceos has been investigated for embezzlement yep but for a separate company yep so things are looking pretty shifty and shitty for anyone who is owed money by Pledge Music, and there are a lot of famy, eh, famy? famous bands have went through it as well. Bands who have been playing for years. It's not just for Joe Bloggs in the street that wants to raise $20 to buy a CD. It's, it's not stupid. It's the, the potential for this was fantastic. Yep. And the way it looks at the moment is that, which is atypical, 
no, I'm sorry, it's actually typical of the music industry is that artists are getting shafted. Yeah. Um, basically, the, the funds are all tied up. People that are making applications to have the funds uh, released to them are being told, oh, but you have to hit this target or whatever, and they're saying, well, we have, uh, we can't release the funds because of X and Y. Yeah. Stolen tactics. Anyway, sorry. So, Generation X, which is that group of Toz Nobassi, Zach Wilde, Steve Vai, Malmsteen and Nuno you know. Betancourt, mm-hmm. uh, they obviously did their Generation X tour and they have been putting together, I wasn't sure if it was a live album or just a, an album, music, a release. Um, they have, in fact, if I bring up the actual campaign, I don't know if it tells you how much money they raised. The guitars that destroyed the world. Yeah, there's no real way to, uh, there's not like a public display of how much money they were given. Uh, but I'm sure if I click on pledges, maybe. Is that going to be private information? I mean, there's certainly a lot of pledges. Can you hit that? Yes, excuse me. Because I am a professional. So I can't see the exact amount of, of pledges, but I mean, it's Steve Vai, Tozan Abassi, Zach Wilde, Nuno Betancourt, and Malmsteen. This is going to, a huge amount of people are going to have pledged for this. Oh, absolutely. And like, when you look at people's names there, it's saying like pledges 27, pledges 32, pledges 6. Yeah. So guys have obviously bought into different tiers and different options. Yeah. Um, CDs, merchandise. I think there was actually a couple of guitars owned yeah, by yeah, the artists for sale and get, stuff um, as well. You could get a Steve a signed Vi guitar and a signed Zach guitar and a Nuno. Yeah, and passes to gigs and stuff like. There's there's a lot of stuff on there. I mean, okay, so there was a Malmsteen signed Strat presented by Malmsteen, like given to you by Malmsteen, seven and a half thousand dollars gone, sold. Someone is seven and a half thousand dollars worse off. Now it's also worth pointing out that. Let's have a look. Does it tell you how many are these are limited to? No, but it'll probably be one. I say you say that, but the Vi one it says very limited quantity, so it doesn't say. Mm-hmm. It says if you buy this guitar, mm. yeah. So no, no information on just how many of those there were, but yeah, you know the Zach Wild gone, Steve Vi gone, uh, Gem, that Gem gone, the betting, all of the guitars are sold. So this thing would have made a lot of money, a lot of money. But to be honest, there's not a lot of stuff there left. It's like 50 albums, a couple of beanies. Yeah, like yeah. They, they have done very well and basically hitting their target probably more. Yeah. So the update reads, uh, to all of our fans who have contributed to the Pledge Music campaign for Generation X, first, we apologise for the delay in communicating as we have been diligently working to try and resolve the issues Pledge Music has as it pertains to the campaign and other campaigns that are involved with uh, so we can deliver to the fans what they are owed. As you are aware, Pledge Music has issued the following statement, which reads, in part, the situation that Pledge Music has found itself in is unacceptable, and to all of the artists, managers, labels and fans who have put their trust in us, we're deeply sorry. All of us at the company are working around the clock to address everybody's concerns uh, and are hopeful of reaching a positive resolution soon. Generation Acts goes on to say, We have attempted many, many times to resolve this problem, uh, as we are also due monies. By law, Pledge Music has to keep monies received by pledges uh, in an escrow account. And, by, uh, and after many attempts, we have not been able to confirm this. After several months of attempts, we have no communication or information that indicates that this will be resolved. Pledge Music has maintained that they are in discussion with interested parties about potential sponsorship with or acquisition of uh, Pledge Music with the ultimate goal for that to happen. Uh, what does that say? With the ultimate goal for that to happen so that they could meet all of their outstanding obligations to the Generation Acts campaign and the campaigns of many other artists that are currently hanging in the balance. However, we don't know if this will happen and if it does, when that would be. We are just as upset as you, the fans. Uh, I love it, this. Yeah. The very last thing that we, uh, that we want is to be part of a situation whereby not just generation acts but our fans are taken advantage of this is simply wrong we are actively working on trying to figure out a solution we thank you for the patient for your patience while doing so if five artists with such a standing in the music industry who obviously have a lot of legal backing from record labels etc can't get an answer yeah something is seriously wrong especially considering the first thing that it says in the actual pledge music uh, statement is that the situation they found themselves in is unacceptable. Yep. 
course it is, so rectify it. Yeah. So what I want to do is I want to read through some of the comments that they've got on this. Mm -hmm. Give them give them some feedback. Darren Murphy says, what is the date you'll be fulfilling this? Can you please let us all know? Daryl, read the fucking update. Yeah. George Masters, why don't I at least receive the unsigned CD? This is a bunch of crap. So you're just going to rip off all of these people. No, and this not. is really the problem. People will look at this and it's a Generation X thing. They've not read the statement as the yeah. problem. Yeah. I'm looking for short comments. <laughs> Uh, Aaron Cap. so uh, as of right now, I paid $100 plus for two guitar picks, a beanie and a shirt. Yes, you did. Yes. Uh, I received the unsigned CD several months ago, I'm happy to say, but this new shit is not cool at all. Really hope the situation, uh, the solution for this thingy comes sooner. Yep. Uh, but you said you signed them months ago. Where are they? A lot of money was spent on these. What are you going to do about it? So it's a, it's an absolute shit show. It really is an absolute shit show um, for multiple reasons. Fans getting upset will take it out on the artists. This will reflect negatively on Zach Wild, on Steve Vai, on Malmsteen, on Nuno Betancourt, and on Tozan Abassi. Not like he hasn't had his fair share of um, disappointments for fans. Mm -hmm. But yeah, uh, it's a sad situation. Makes me makes me it annoys me. You look at shit. It's, it's shit. I feel really bad for the people who read the updates but are still unfulfilled. Yeah. I don't feel so bad for people that leave comments slevering into their keyboards, like rabidly frothing at the mouth, hitting things with their big, giant, malformed <laughs> stump arms. <laughs> why did I not get my CD? I think, read why. I think Trump got in trouble for, for that. Did he? That impression you just did. Right. <laughs> okay. Which Donald Trump wanted to be me? Yeah. I didn't sue him. Yeah. <laughs> he should. Um, oh. Cool. So we got the last two things to talk about. Oh, this is and a... I've left this one quiet. You have. And I didn't even know this was coming up. Okay. Oh, baby boy. Yeah. So today is the 16th of April. Mm -hmm. The 16th of April. Many, one, many. Six, four, 19. Many, many months ago. Many months ago. Many. TTM Guitars issued a promise to all of their artists that their guitars have a, and I quote, guaranteed delivery date of the 15th of April. Mm -hmm. So that was yesterday. Mm -hmm. Guaranteed. Mm -hmm. TTM, talking total mints. Guaranteed delivery mm -hmm. date. Not guaranteed shipping date. Or guaranteed date. delivery date. Guaranteed. Mm -hmm. Guaranteed. 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 If it's not there, what does that mean? Money back? Well, whatever the guarantee was? Yeah. I mean, what was the guarantee? Was it just that it was guaranteed? Yeah. Okay. Now, so, I've so been, it's not really a guarantee then? I've been following this religiously, going into the... Uh, the Hell hath no fury like a Levi scorned. The official TTM USA Guitar Owners Group. Still open to the public. You can go and read this. I have no idea why they haven't locked this down. <laughs> I give it 50 minutes after this podcast goes yeah. up and shut no down. No idea why they have not locked this down because I have screenshotted a bunch of things. Oh there are some things God. that I wish I had screenshotted that I had not screenshotted because I didn't see them going away. And actually, who knows how much I've missed because things are getting deleted in this group. Oh, of course. I mean, that's, that's just damage control. Yeah, we have your money. We don't want your negative reviews. So we're just going to go through now. Um, Stephen Fellows, is anyone else curious as to if their guitar was even built? <laughs> First top comment, yes, very much so, lol. Next comment, yep. Kind of feel like we all just got robbed. I doubt if I'll ever see my guitar, honestly. Jeff, he's still not giving up hope. You'll be okay, Lance is a stand-up dude. <laughs> yep, got a history of that. Busy, but very great at heart. You won't get beat, I'm sure of that. What's that based on? Can we add Jeff Christ and just rub this in his face in six months? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I'm sure they will. These guitars will turn up, but again, <laughs> yeah. my guitar in December. They told me they were finished painting it. I don't believe it anymore. <laughs> Took you four months to realize that you don't need four months to paint a guitar. I was told I'd have mine in August, then September, then October, then December, then January, then yesterday. Now who knows when? I mean, we all knew when in August when you weren't getting it. 
Um, I'm afraid. And I'm glad we caught this. So this was posted an hour ago. Mm-hmm. And that comment won't be there later. So, um, yeah. If that anyone... I don't be here tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> later. Night, tonight. In 10 minutes. Today should be an interesting read on this page. <laughs> Now, it's, here's where people start twisting things in their mind. From my understanding, today would have been the original ship date, but I heard that there was a small delay in the paint department, so there may be about a week delay. So if it's delayed to about the 20th for a ship date, maybe five days in, in transit. Guaranteed. Yeah, so I'm looking forward to the end of the month. Like, why? What? No, you, were, you had a guaranteed delivery date of yesterday. Um, information is coming tomorrow, according to Lance. This was, you know, a day ago. <laughs> <laughs> on 4.16 I'll be posting a video update with some very big TTM news including updates on all TTM artist builds why would you be posting updates on artist builds on the 16th a day after they were due to be delivered I mean he posted that yesterday yeah and still nothing yeah uh, Charles Lamb can we check crossed. his page uh, we can shortly but this I, the, oh, you want to get into this one? This is where f- things are fucking... Ha- so Rick Fox, right? Rick Fox, my absolute hero in this situation. I mean, the guy is an absolute goon. There's no ifs that. Rick, I hope you're listening to this, buddy. You are my hero. Tell you what, Rick, if you contact us, Careful. I will personally make sure you get sent a Guitar Souls t-shirt. <laughs> yeah. That will cost me money and I have no problems doing that. I don't that. think he's going to do that after what I, what I say now. Oh. Um, <laughs> yeah. I mean, then. Rick, you've been my personal hero throughout this entire situation because you are the David Brent of this entire situation. Oh. He just so is, right? Do you know who Rick Fox is? No. No, nah, no reason that you should. Um, he played in the band Wasp. Oh, okay. For about two weeks. Right. Before they put an album out. Right. He played in the band Steeler. Mm-hmm. Remember Steeler? Uh, another name. So I he, know them. That uh, Malmsteen, when he went over to to uh, America, he uh, Steeler was the, the, oh, the right, first okay. band that he was in. Right. Uh, he did actually play on the Steeler album that Malmsteen was okay. on. Uh, but again, no one no one knows what that is. Essentially, Rick played with some bands forty years ago, and he's the unluckiest man to have not ended up on any of the albums. And he, well, these bands never really went on to have hit albums. No, they didn't. Um, Rick's never done anything. He really has just never done anything. And it's tragic. It really it's sad, right? Because I don't know if these have, if these comments are going to have been deleted because they've been deleting a lot of the things Rick's been saying where he's really kicking up kicking up a fuss like I'm sorry, you know this was such a great opportunity for TTM you don't know the level of uh, of exposure that I was going to bring to you guys with these with these upcoming gigs things like that and it's like dude you upload videos of your gigs to to YouTube and they get 200 views like how much exposure are you how, anyway let's read this comment the only thing that might be in his favor is what you can't really quantify is who he knows Yep. Ev- evidently no one. Evidently, mate, fucking no one. Or else, why would he be taking an artist endorsement with TTM? <laughs> why would he be taking an artist endorsement with TTM? Like, I love how aggressive you get when I'm like questioning you. Yeah. Why, I'm, well, I'm, I'm just going to keep throwing that fishing line out and you're going to keep biting. Yeah, well, it's for the audience, right? Why would, why would you take a fucking artist endorse- endorsement with TTM? If there were any other options on the fucking table, why on earth would anyone have gone for the TTM one? But you don't know what was offered. To, to f- just to give him the benefit of the doubt. I do know what was offered because he's been very clear about that. Oh. Right? A signature base. A signature base. Not just like here's a free base. Mm-hmm. A signature base that he didn't have to pay for. Now, anyone that goes to that level of accepting something free for some from someone and putting your name behind it and on it when you've never even played anything they've made is already desperate. When you are of the standing in the in the scene where you are willing to have a signature model with your name on, you either acknowledge that no one is going to buy it and you're doing it for your own fucking ego, or you genuinely are that deluded that you think someone is going to buy a signature base from somebody... I see you laughing. Someone's going to buy a signature base from somebody that played guitar in a band 40 fucking years ago before they were signed. Why does he get a signature bass if he's a guitarist? He, no, no, he's a bassist. Oh, okay, sorry. Right. He's a bassist. Just the way you were saying that there was like, as if he just changed the instrument and then he was given a signature. Sorry. So, Right, uh, the reason I was laughing there is, I didn't even know this was coming and you just went off in one and I love it. I fucking love it. I've missed this. <laughs> so, here, I have a, a, a legit question. This is this is Rick. Is there any official artist representation in, in here on the TTM page? And if so, please let me know exactly who that is. 
and I'll be able to better direct my concerns and questions to whoever that is. I as think he's copy and pasted that because he's put it in. That was a previous comment. Oh, okay, he, sorry. But, yeah. uh, as of t- the 2019 NAM show, I thought that James Shelley was the designated artist rep for TTM. What happened to him? James Shelley disappeared. He is, it looks like he's been like taken off the page because he's been tagged, but the tag is like that little emblem next to it that says, nope. Yeah. Um, <laughs> last time I contacted him, he said he was not officially associated. Yep. Yeah. Why would someone do that? Why would someone that worked for the company for about two months is now like, whoa, guys, fuck all to do with me? <laughs> yeah. Um, I think this page is kind of unofficial regardless of the page name. Yeah, it's it's unofficial despite the fact that the two admins of the page are Lance, the guy that runs the fucking company, and his son. Yep, totally fucking unofficial. Yeah. Um, uh, wait, 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 wait. Let, let, let me read some of these. Scroll up a bit, please. here we go I don't understand why people are giving you a bunch of shit all you have done is ask questions on your build and some reason people are acting as if you're a traitor that's a fair comment but at the same time like how far up the river do you need to go to realise that you are not by the beach and this is that I like that last part as if you're a traitor because I've I've done this in the past where I've talked about cults right that's cult like behaviour how can you be how can you be a traitor to a to a, a brand how can you be a tra- how could maybe if you own the company and somebody plays your guitars and then they betray you you can say you're a traitor right but if you play some guitars and you no, know other people that play those play guitars yeah, yeah if you buy guitars that don't exist and other people buy those guitars that don't exist yeah. and then they get upset that they don't exist and yeah. you don't they're not traitors yeah they're people who are starting to be sensible and go well why did i throw this money out there for something that isn't there so Des Lynch, you've got guys like Rick on here who can lift the profile of TTM through gigs and videos, advertising and interviews, yet going through his posts, he's getting no response regarding his build. Where does that put the non-top tier guys? Customers yeah. like the rest. And he's the best. The guitars are amazing and well worth the wait. How did... Do- I'm going to move away from the microphone. How do you know that? But I think most guys are only looking for reassurances on their guitars. So come on, TTM, talk to your family. Five likes. Yeah. Uh, the one I really enjoyed, and I, uh, he's probably deleted this, but I, I'm going to go and look for it and see if it is still there. Absolutely glorious comment, this. Absolutely glorious. Again, Rick just being hilarious. I'm sure he's probably commented on, on this as well because he's, he's clearly raging with Lance. No, not on there. Okay. We'll talk about TTM franchises wait, in a wait, second. Wait, wait, that looks like the worst comparison yeah. theft I've ever seen. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, where is it? This, like, where's the bridge? Our new Purple Heart fretboards are pretty special. This guitar they has might no be if you give them to fucking artists to play. Also, got a wee bit. Look where the neck is situated on that body yeah. compared to the rest of the body. Like, yeah. that's off centre. Yeah. Um. Is it? Here we go. Here what we the fuck is that thing? So this. this oh my god! Yeah, uh, yeah. I'm talking about bad relicking. I'm talking about bad guitar, man. What the fuck is that thing? So this was. This you ever seen that video of the guy going, "What the fuck is that? Yeah. Is that a cat, mom?" That's what's like looking at these guitars. This was made for Don Dokken. Um, as in from Dokken? Yeah, yeah, from 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 Dokken, right? Mm-hmm. But he, so here's the magic thing, right? So. It's not on this one. It might be on the official TTM page. Uh, they posted a picture of it and it says, you know, TTM Dokken, especially made for, for Don Dokken of Dokken on the back, etc. Who reliced it? Stevie Wonder? Uh, yeah. And Rick Fox commented on it and said, oh, nice. Maybe Don will actually show up to the TTM booth next year then. Because <laughs> he was due to show up and he was due to do the fucking, the gig and all of this shit. And uh, yeah, no, never, 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 fucking never happened. Never, never showed right. up. Just, that's the first I've ever seen this, right? First of all, I'll put that, it on screen for Yes, please. Yeah. So, first impressions, right? What the fuck is going on with that brake angle at the fret? Uh, sorry, the nut into those tuners. Like, all of those strings are now at an angle from where they should be. Yeah. What the fuck is that bridge? Yeah, 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 yeah. That is probably the cheapest bridge I've ever seen. Yeah, just bolted onto the body. That is a really, really terrible body if you go into cash converters and buy like a one of their 50 pound guitars that's you'd the bridge that comes you'd on still it. get a better guitar than this but it looks <laughs> of things right that relic job it's not been relic that's been abused yeah 
why does the logo not fit the headstock and why does the headstock look like it's just been badly photoshopped onto the guitar? Yeah. Why do the inlays look like they've been fucking painted on? What wood is used on that fretboard and why is it badly lacquered? Yeah. What is going on? Glorious, mate. It's absolutely glorious. There's nothing glorious about this, man. What is going on? Another great one, and I'm not sure if this was... Uh, mm. I'm not sure if this was... Oh, oh, look, Bob, he's commented a few minutes ago. Well, I've chewed off my fingernails. Things, this is this is the day where, where things are, oh, are, are really me. happening. So, yeah, someone said, like, how can I get in touch with TT? I want to ask about my build. Might might be able to find this. And, uh, <laughs> Getting close to the date, one week, five days, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Uh, oh, wait oh, a yeah, minute. Yeah, yeah. So, about the old gold going here? Yeah, so this is James James Shelley, who was previously working with the company, responded to someone who's... The, mo- the who's, most unfortunate AR guy yeah. for that time that he was yeah. there. He re- responded with a comment, Lance and Brock don't have the time to respond to their customers' inquiries, but they have the time to censor, remove, and delete not only my comments, but the comments of your associates. That said, fellas, you're being sold lines and lines of bullshit. While they're hiding behind promises and unkept deadline, after deadline, after deadline, you guys on the front lines are being screwed. We'll see how long this post lasts. One day. Guys, again, I'll move away from the microphone. This guy worked for the company. He knows what's going on. Listen to him. This, you, you, and it's too late. It's too late. You can't get your money back. None of you people are going to be able to get your money back because the, these guys have to be willing to give you the money back for that to happen. Unless you bought by credit card or you, you start a class action lawsuit. Which I know someone is doing. Good. And I will keep everyone. I up. hope. I don't mean this in, it, in any nasty way, but if the case, everything that seems to be true is true and that Lance, etc., whoever else is involved, are running and laughing with the money... I actually hope they get pumped legally, like absolutely punished. And I mean like full on bite the pillow, no lube, punch you in the back of the head while they go at it, fucking punished. Yeah. Um, uh, something else really funny about Lance, right? I, as far as I'm aware, he has no affiliation with Coachella, you know, the, the big Coachella. Yeah, one of the biggest festivals in the States. Yeah, yeah. So he started his own company called Coachella Metal. Is he going to get sued for that too? Probably. Right? Yeah. I saw um, he met someone at Nam, and uh, and they posted on Twitter a picture of him uh, of them themselves with Lance, and they're like, "Oh my god, I just met the guy that owns Coachella." <laughs> oh. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. So th- this was this was a fun one. Stephen asks, "What email can I send questions to regarding my build?" And Charlie responds to with. Ignored at ttm.guitars.usa.com <laughs> Which is probably their actual fucking website, the cheapest they can ever have shit. Yeah. Uh, and then <laughs> James Shelley, yet again, um your state attorney general. It's kinda of hinting that you need to take this up legally, that you, you're not getting what you thought you were getting. Yeah. Any pictures of seven strings? Plenty. Not any TTMs though. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, 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 go back up. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> My seven string wall waiting for my TTM seven string and there's legators on it. Oh, this guy's going to be disappointed <laughs> again. <laughs> Poor dude. Yeah. Um, yeah, unfortunately, I, I know a lot of the uh, a lot of the Rick, Fo- Rick Fox posts got deleted, um, which is which is a real shame because they were absolute... Oh, go on, what have you seen that you love? Sorry if that's a stupid question, but I was looking at the artist page endorsed artists on the TTM website. And I'm unable to find my name anywhere on the list. I see everyone else's, not everyone else's, some people's, which makes me think I'm not going to get my base. I would like the TTM email, but haven't got a response since October. Since this was in April. October. <laughs> yeah. Um, don't worry, I'm not on there either. Ah, <laughs> oh, you guys are mugs. It's it's watching this unfold has been the greatest thing that's ever happened it's the greatest thing it's not thing. though For, it is and do you know why it is because I warned all of these people I fucking told all of these people Did, okay Bef- m- like well over six months ago I fucking told all of these people I warned all of you and told you to get out while you still could and now mugs like fucking Jason McCulloch or whatever his name is I'm sure his name's there somewhere right guys like this they're buying franchises these guys are buying, they're paying money into a franchising with this company because they believe they have to believe it that much. 
they have, you know, may, oh, maybe if I really show them that I'm devoted to the cult, maybe if I do this, if I just throw out the money, if I just stay in line, if I just behave, maybe I'll get my guitar on time. <laughs> The entire thing has been a glorious shit show and I have thoroughly enjoyed watching it. We are getting to the exploding point. Yep. This is yeah. not going to be good. Yeah. It's just not good. Not Told you. Good. I warned you. I fucking warned you. I warned you all. Would love to say, hate to say I told you so like the hives, but sometimes saying I told you so to stupid people is um, it's a good feeling. It's a, it's a good feeling. Uh, it's tragic because I, I think I said this in the original video where I talked about this. Like, I get it. I do fucking get it. There have been times in the past where the idea of being legitimized in the industry that I'm looking to work in would mean that I would throw everything away, all integrity, just to have that feeling of being legitimate, being recognized. But with age comes wisdom and experience. Right, and in and that with being a guitar solo comes cynicism. Yeah. Now, the moment I saw this, I just looked at it and was like, "That's bullshit." Of course, that's bullshit. But I could understand fourteen-year-old Lee. I probably wouldn't have thought that was bullshit. Um, but fortunately, there are people out there like me, like Mike, that will come out and warn you people of stuff like this. We do try. Listen, listen. Go out. Go go play. Go play the stuff you love. Go get an Ormsby. Go get an Ormsby. Just do it. You'll be happy. Mm -hmm. I can't believe that this is a real page that's still happening. It's a public group owned by the company owners. Yep. Left. On, pff, wait a minute. Go back up. Sometimes the most important notes are the ones you don't play. It was a meme shared to the page on the 8th of April. So you're saying that every person endorsed by TTM is the most important musician in the world. <laughs> It is glorious. Do you understand the you fucking these, irony like, in your posts, sir? Like, you've got these, art, like, what they call, call tier two artists, right? I'm an artist for this company. Look, here's me doing a cover of I Don't Want to Change the World. Not very well on an Epiphone. Uh, what, what are they? Go back up now. What, are, are those meant to be? Their fucking V is obscenely big. Cut, wait, cut out now, right? I think this is where they maybe got their name from because we know TTM stands for Taller Than Midgets. I think that V might actually be Taller Than a Midget. <laughs> <laughs> now, what what the fuck? I mean, let's let's just be honest here, right? Those first two left Chinese Jackson and centre left exactly. Yep. The next one is a Chinese ESP, yep. and the next one one is is actually just a Shine guitar. Yeah. <laughs> That's the same headstock as the Shine guitars, the same brake angles, the same bullshit. Those inlays have been stolen from a Jeff Loomis very badly, and that body is so out of proportion with the hardware. I mean, that Floyd Rose looks like it's literally jammed against that pickup. Yeah. What the fuck is going on here? Yep. What but, the fuck? But don't worry, guys. Everything will be okay. Right, chuck me those magazines. Let's finish up. So I've got a couple of Total Guitar magazines to look through. Um, Can we just ask Donald Trump to press the hard reset button and get rid of us? <laughs> just go on. That, that, see that big nuclear football? Just give it a good old kick. <laughs> um, I have September 2003. This was the issue that I learned Master of Puppets from. Did you wake up at the end of it? I, I'm trying to look for the joke somewhere. Wake me up when September ends. Where is it? Where is that? It's not on there. You said it was September 2003. Oh, I see. I see. Fucking hell, man. Sorry, I've just got TTM on the brain, mate. <laughs> yeah. So here's the classic rock special. Um, <laughs> there's Kinesis are in here. Kinesis? So we t we talked about Kinesis briefly. It turns out that uh, the, mm -hmm. the guitarist is a Glasgow boy. Oh, yeah. okay. Um they didn't do much. I went and did the the, uh, the reason I bring this up is they were they were supporting the first ever gig I went to. So nice. Um, and their drummer did a stage dive, and I grabbed his leg, and I thought it was the coolest thing that would ever happen in my life. And now, yeah, <laughs> now you're pals with me. Yeah, <laughs> make for twenty for party cannon, as Bob calls me. Yeah. So uh, here we have in two thousand and three, classic rock is cool again. Ten reasons why classic rock is cool again. One, it's not. Yeah. Two, it still isn't. Yeah. Three, it wasn't cool back then. Um, Four, no. Let me read them. Sorry. 
<laughs> Number one. I'm going to hit it myself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm turning into the guy on this t-shirt. Uh, one, without attitude and showmanship, rock music like is kind of dull. Right, okay. So what you're saying is that if you're not in a classic rock band, there is absolutely no artistry or yeah. showmanship in your music. Also, why does that make it cool again? Surely that's always been the case. Was there a period True. where you didn't need attitude for something to be cool? And if, if so, why do you need it now? Yeah, okay, yep. Number two, I'm going to agree with this, because the darkness are amazing. Yep. Okay. We'll give them that. But that's not to do with classic rock being amazing. That's just to be with the darkness being an amazing band. Yep. At least first album being great, Permission to Land. Go and listen to it right now. <laughs> Number three, there's only so much you can do with power chords and drop D riffs. Disagree. Hard disagree. Motley Crue's autobiography is sleazier than their music. See, we've come full circle. Yeah. Okay, what's that got to do with classic rock? Yeah, I don't really think of them as being classic rock. No, they're not really. Um, At least not to me. Digital effects still have a long way to go. Says the magazine that constantly sucks the dick of Line 6. <laughs> um, Anything, even the Zoom pedals used to get fucking... 5 out of 5. Best thing ever. The new Radiohead album takes the piss. Well, how, how does that make classic rock cool? So we'll look. First up, we should make it clear that we consider the Benz and OK Computer to be among the towering achievements of Western civilization. However, we still think Hail to the Thief sucks ass. Okay, so the only two genres in the world is Hail to the Thief and classic rock. And because Hail to the Thief isn't good, classic rock's amazing. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's a black and white fallacy. Um, number seven. A phallic indeed. Yeah. Absolute dick. <laughs> Money talks and bullshit walks. I mean, what is this? These aren't points. Music is supposed to be fun, and then they've got a picture of Chris Martin from uh, Coldplay, okay, saying "Dry your eyes for for Christ's sakes, man." I mean, and it's clearly been done by a Scott. Yep, uh, and what I'm going to say is, uh, he is the the last man laughing against the majority of these bands because he is making a fucking fortune. <laughs> and as much as I don't like to admit it too much, because I'm not a biggest their, their biggest fan, he is a hell of a songwriter. Mm -hmm. That band genuinely are fantastic songwriters sorry deal with it yeah skipping over the rest um to be fair though That's you enough. know it's, it's a good it is a good issue to read through because you've got info on like um there's a ton of stuff on led zeppelin there's a ton of stuff on eddie van halen oh, there's your man um yeah exactly yeah, this is what, what i was going to this is the new shit and, and they've listed off uh, a bunch of the top top young guitar players in the country um conveniently <laughs> yeah, beautiful conveniently all people that they could get into the photo studio yeah. So Andy Lister, number one son. Do you remember the band I, number one I son? I don't remember the band number one son. No, I mean, He's playing a maverick. Yeah. Sick. Uh, Darren Smith from Funeral for a Friend. I loved Funeral for a Friend. They were the first band of that size that I saw live supporting uh, Iron Maiden and they were fantastic. And I went and saw them in the final tour as well, even though it was only two original members and it was still fucking great. Hmm. Um, oh, I'm a little bit more relieved now. I thought he was 22. He's not... He's playing a custom 22. He's 28 there. Um, though everyone else seems to be uh, 22. Uh, Jay Wadeson from Number One Son. I don't remember the band. No, I mean, I may, go, I may give them a list because. Just because. Chris Roberts, Funeral for a Friend. I think Chris actually works for Guitar Guitar now. Oh, really? One of the two guys for Funeral, or maybe even one later member, works for Guitar Guitar in, is it Epson maybe? One of the London shops. And uh, occasionally when he's doing gear demos, starts playing Funeral for a Friend riffs. Trousers don't fit. Mate, your cats are dead. Yeah. Um, so here we go. Connor McGloin from Kinesis. Pat McGloin. Yeah. <laughs> and and I, Sorry, I, lo Connor. I love this, right? So this is the new shit. And under philosophy, he says, I hate the sound of guitars. I try to make my instrument sound as far removed from the guitar as I possibly can. Play the synth then, you cunt. <laughs> what, what the fuck? A Des from the band Sponge. Sponge are still a, not a big band, but still two and gig. Fair play to them. Danny Felice from Breed 77. Breed 77 done okay. Not my kind of music, but they're there. And then Dan Weller from Sixth. <laughs> Who is genuinely a fucking ridiculous guitarist and a great musician. Yeah, there's your prime example of someone that is very much part of the new shit and, and would go down as being something historic, of historical importance for the guitar. Yep. Everyone else, nah. Uh, yeah, okay. I was going to say, know, two guys for Funeral for a Friend, but at the same time... Funeral for a Friend just is because a big I've, deal, but not historically important to no, the guitar. Just because I've got a bit of a fucking nostalgia hard on yeah. for, for, like, their music doesn't make it. Uh, so, fair play. But Dan Weller, so there you go. Um, big Dan the man. Yeah. Dan, if you're listening, I love you. <laughs> I, I, I doubt he's listening. I, no, so they are. 
He's got better things to do, like uh, pick his toenails or spit. Yeah, watch paint dry. Um, murder dolls, good old. Blows nose. Um, murder dolls. Sadly. <laughs> good Charlotte, the anthem. And that is a belter of a song. Yeah. Yeah. Like, You'll be getting the belt in a minute. I like, I like punk pop. We know that, right? Yeah, but there's good punk pop and there's good Charlotte. Uh, your video looks in the style of I Van Halen. <laughs> Very good. I see what you did there. Anyway, so there was an actual reason that I pulled up this magazine. Yes. Uh, And it's under the gear reviews. Oh, here we go. The Gibson Les Paul Studio Platinum. Right? I'm going to take that off and put that up to the screen. Take that off and burn this magazine. Look at that. Do you want to be Buckethead but not good? No, because it's not white. It's silver. That's my point. It's not going to be like Buckethead. Right, okay. Um, But it's trying. (laughs) £1,230. <laughs> For a Les Paul studio. And that was in 2003. So now it's in seven and a half grand. Well, that's what I'm interested in. I want to see... Uh, I'm interested to have a look on the uh, on the cost. So apparently wonderful tones, superb playability, strong pickups, wide variety of tones. Against extremely heavy on the expensive side and will the lush finish last forever? No. So you take a look through the rest of the rest of the gear. I'm going to have a look. Look up. How what much that'll be in modern days? L P S T P T C H. Let me just write that. <laughs> one. Read it out. L P S T S T I. What? No, I'm not I. P T C H. P T C H one. Cool. Keep going. The P T C H one gene genetics home reference. Fucking ugh. Ugh. Gibson Les Paul. You'll probably not find. And what, what was it? Les Paul Studio Platinum. Studio Platinum. Look up Studio Platinum. Oh, right, the next page. Line 6 Pod XT Pro. Four stars out of five. Classic amps, effects at your fingertips. User friendly controls. Excellent build quality. Some amp models can sound a bit too digital in live environment and perhaps a little pricey. So, saying that it's four out of five stars, but it's not quite there yet. Okay. This is a pre owned one. Mm-hmm. It's not held up the best. Nope, it looks like it's been spray painted by like one of those matte shitty paint tins. So there's no price on it because it's sold. Um, there's one on reverb. Fuck off. That's my only answer, is fuck off. Oh, to be fair, look where it's coming from. Ah, yeah. But. I mean, it's held up. It should be held up to an open flame and ruined. I still kind of like it. No. I would absolutely, uh, looking at that, I would still absolutely love a bucket of Les Paul, though. Oh, I mean, that's <laughs> different kettle of fish here. Come on. Yeah. Behave. Wait, so I'm the sure Pod XT Pro, Matt Skiba. Price includes $149 shipping from the USA. Never heard of GPC. Mm-hmm. So it, to be fair, it looks like they've got quite a bit of decent hardware on it. Yeah. GraphTech saddles. Spares are locking tuners. Still a piece of shit. Bye. <laughs> and the acoustic. Is that the... Uh, oh, no, it's not. I was going to ask if that was the Mustang, but no. You had the fucking... The stinker. Yeah. Uh, there's not really anything exciting nah. in this. Dream setups. For li- under £500. A Pacifica and a Lisa's guitar effects pedal. which for is covers bands. Double this stomp. Is... Even then, a, a Marshall... MG100 DFX. I know what the one on the next page is as well. Is it bad? What do you think would be the dream guitar for a covers band? Over a thousand pounds? Yeah. <sighs> Strap. <laughs> of course it was the Variax. A Variax, a Roland VGA7 V guitar amp, and a Pod XT Pro. Yep. When digital just isn't digital enough. <laughs> fuck off. Yep. Just full on, take yourself onto the moon and fuck off there forever. Yeah, get that one in the bin. Um, in, like I say, interesting to see that the, those Les Paul Platinums sort of held held value reasonably well compared to what a, a studio would have done from, from the same year. Um, well, this one is coming from Japan that you were looking at just now. They might, they might have held value otherwise, but tell you the best way to look up. Go to eBay and put in Les Paul Studio Platinum and then go to sold and finished 
are completed listings. But you can do that on you can do that on Reverb. Okay, I, I would think eBay is a better indicator than Reverb only because of its lineage because they're a bit longer. There's another one there. Uh, no, oh, that is the product. That is the product. Yeah, um, same one. Yeah, so you go. But this is uh, giving you pictures of. This is the product. The guitar and is. If you scroll through, it should have what's sold. Mm -hmm. Learn more about this product. No, I must just not have sold enough of them. Nobody. Uh, view and price guide. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> Estimated use price range: five hundred and thirty-three pounds to eight hundred and thirteen pounds. Yeah, and the, the, so this is tracking literally when when they've uh, actually sold. And how much they went for. So, hmm. yeah. Not held that much not, value. Not hugely valuable. So I kind of liked them. That was why I put that issue aside. That's fair enough, mate. That's fair enough. Um, but, well, I don't want to own one, but when I was a kid, I certainly remember looking at that going, wow, that's kind of cool. Slash looks awfully funny in this cover. He does, doesn't he? Zach Wilde, Speed Kings on the cover of this. This is March 2004. Um, this was a, a big one for me because, you know, Shred. It's not Zach Wilde. It's not the shred special, but there are some. There are a couple of funny moments in here. Um, oh, just Zach Wild, mate. Just oh, School of Rock. Look, it's that that guy that steals guitars. That's what it is. Uh, Leaf. Yeah. So there's an arch enemy feature in here, and I've I oh, vividly no. remember this. Right. Do from, not put anything about it on screen, or we'll get sued. Well, that's really annoying because that's what we need to put on screen because that's the funny part. Um, whereas, oh no, 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 it's not Arch Enemy in this one. Um, they might have the picture. Arch Enemy are in this, but it's not the actual interview that I was thinking of. Aww. They've got the picture in the, in the, this is a, a picture of Mike looking like an old man. Looking like himself. But he looks really old there. He does, but he has old. Um, yeah, so. <laughs> Would you call Arch Enemy death metal? No. Exactly. No. Sorry, Talk Guitar. You were wrong in 2004. And you're still wrong now. Now, I loved this back then. Um, turbocharge your axe. How to play faster without actually having to practice. Very Tom Hess. Um, <laughs> number one, use the lightest strings that you can find. Many shredders use eight gauge strings. So no, light that you'll hardly know they're there. No, they don't. What does that mean? Many shred. Why not list some off? I can think of maybe one. Hmm. Malmsteen. Malmsteen uses eights? Yeah. Uh, that number, makes sense. Number two, lower your action. The lower your guitar's action, the easier it is to fret the notes. Just make sure your guitar is set up properly to avoid buzzing. I mean, that's not just for shredding. That's just for playing guitar. Yeah. Tune your guitar down a half step. This will lower the tension of your strings, making them easier to fret. Not one. Maybe easier to bend, but yeah. not significantly. Yeah. Use a lubricant. Products such as fast fret will keep your strings slick and clean. You'll find your digits will glide over them with ease. As opposed to when they've got rusty, jaggy bits yeah. that stop your hands moving. Here's the one that really annoyed me. Get your neck scalloped. A scalloped fingerboard has the f has the wood scooped out between the frets. All you have to do is lightly touch the string to fret the note, making it very fast. Just ask Malmsteen. That's already how it Scalloped works. fretboards do not aid in playing faster. Of course, they also the function of a scallop is not so that you can touch the string and it will fret, because that's why the fret yeah. is the... Uh, yeah, whether the fretboard is there or not, the fret is in the exact same fucking place. Yeah, um, Keep it clean. If the back of your guitar neck is coated in sweat and filth, it will slow you down. Give it a good wipe before you play. Fair point. Yeah. But also not going to make you any faster. Just make your com uh, playing more comfortable. Get your frets dressed. This process grinds down your frets until the guitar feels almost fretless. That's not what fret dressing is. Well, it depends what shop you go to. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> also, no, does not make you faster. Yeah. Uh, avoid gloss finishes. Glossy guitar necks may look lovely, but after a while they get very sticky and that will seriously slow you down. Instead, take a leaf out of Zach Wilde's book and grab some naked wood. That's a personal preference thing and Zach Wilde shaved the back of the guitar necks that he had as far as I know with a fucking Stanley blade. Don't do that if you don't know how to do it. Is that the case? I believe so. That's why his guitars come with as if they've been painted right? and then the necks are okay. unfinished. That's my understanding anyway. Yeah. Is that John Petrucci? That is, yeah. Remember he looked about 12? Yeah, yeah. That Well, that was when I started reading magazines. He looked like that, so that's how I thought of Petrucci. And then around G3, he started to look like a fucking bear. And I'm like, what's happened? And yeah. And he just was like, like some sort of shred Jesus. Yeah. That picture of Zach Wilde on a, on a fucking... What is that? Is that a truck? A rusty truck? I don't know, but... 
What an absolute hero. Absolute hero. Love him. Zach, you're still my you're still my hero. I think oh no, this isn't the one where there's a picture of him with, with the uh, but he does teach no more tears in this this no issue. No more tears. That. Steve Vai, not a no fan. No more beers. Yeah. Uh, is this issue? Yes. Oh. So there's the picture of uh, of Michael looking really uh, old in the intro, but there he looks like a 14 year old boy. No, that, that's a Facebook profile picture, isn't it? Yeah. And hey, what's going on with Chris? I hate school. Oh, good lord. Uh, there's a couple of riffs. I'm so glad the comments that I had in my brain did not come out of my mouth. Yeah. Uh, a how to Shred Guide. Again. Oh, Robert. Uh, it's taught by Misha Nikolic. Oh, sorry. If memory serves me correctly. Just use that image of Paul. But that actually is a really good, good example. You, don't, you do not see that guitar, if memory serves me right. Was that the guitar? Yeah. So this is a prototype PGM mm-hmm. that was before the release of his PGM 100. Yep. Um, there is, uh, as, for anyone watching on YouTube, I did a, a video talking about all of Paul's signature models over the years. This was red with blue F-holes, uh, and it had a scallop fretboard. Though it looks it looks like this, this is pre-scalloping. Really? Yeah. Is that the one that's got the three pickups in it? Yes. Three super distortions or something? Yep. So yep. he was playing around with uh, with different ideas before he went with uh, an official signature model, and that was that was one of them. That's so. the way it should be. Yep. Uh, all along the Watchtower, System of a Down Chop 2. Very interesting picture of Darren. Great guitar. I mean, that's cool as fuck. Oh, congratulations to my mate Ped. Plays for Frontier on Sections. Got endorsed by Ibanez, and he's got... A bright pink metallic Iceman that he'd custom painted and it's beautiful. Nice. His guitars are mental. I love it. Oh, fucking Namtro report. Fucking hell. Oh, fucking Emily Strange guitar. No. We've all dated someone that had one of those. Nope. No? I have not. Dean Custom. There's something uh, on the back see of See that this. Dean Custom 450? I remember watching videos of Michelangelo Battle playing Speed Kills, but it was Speed Lives. Yes. When those yeah. came out. Fucking speed kills and speed lives. <laughs> yep, yep plenty. Ah, uh, okay, so that's why I tagged this page. Because back in 2004, Bare Knuckle Pickups released the War Pig Humbucker, uh, and then they gave it five out of five. Uh, so, you know, just more of a sign that Bare Knuckle have been going for a very, very long time. Um, um, I don't, I, yeah, I remember the first reading I ever had of any of the, uh, any of the first time I heard of Bare Knuckle, sorry, was through Talk Guitar. And yep. the fair play to them, they sung the praises. Yeah, and uh, they've gone with for and against outrageous power, sizzling tones, in- individual looks, and easy adjustment. And against, if we ever find anything, we'll be sure to let you know. Which is very much how I feel about the bare knuckle stuff. Everything I've played, I've thoroughly enjoyed. So absolutely, um, absolutely. I only ever owned one guitar with bare knuckles, and it was the Telecaster that Kieran now has. Okay, that had the Miracle Men. It was a matched pair. Jesus Christ, they were great. They were so mm. versatile. The guitar would do. Telecaster sounds, Strat sounds, Les Paul, just fucking whatever you wanted from it. Um, cool. What about a cat? Yeah. So I think that's us. An hour and forty minutes of us talking bollocks. Nice. Wait, um, you even managed to get a wee ranting. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just um, I'm looking at the audio signals and I'm like, that's going to be fun to mix. <laughs> Tim Max, that's going to be fun for you to put some plugins over. Yeah. I mean, they're already already there. That's, even that's better. Pre- presets. Even better. <laughs> it's all about being efficient, right? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, as always, guys, thank you very much for watching. If you do have any questions, let us know in that comment section below. Please do share the podcast with your friends, your enemies. The more popular we are, the more people that listen to the show, the more often we'll be doing it um, and the more rich and successful we'll be. That's always the goal, isn't it? <sighs> that's the dream. Yeah. And uh, actually, the more e- the easier it's going to be to protect ourselves when we get sued. That's... I'm not getting sued. I mean, you're you're an accessory. I've said it before. You can't rip knickers off a bare arse. True. I cannot give you anything I do not have. True. That is, that's a good point. <laughs> so yeah. it works. <laughs> yep. Yep. Men with nothing left to lose, they they tend to go the craziest. I should really calm down. I've got more to lose now. But I'm, I mean, I'll fight. So am I going to be the one that's like naked biting people then? Yeah. Yeah. You're my attack dog. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah head on over to the link in the description pick yourself up a Guitar Souls t-shirt uh, send us your comments suggestions requests anything like that we're always happy to, to listen to you read if I've got a whistleblower within the TTM camp please get in contact it's going to happen mate sooner, we're going to find somebody sooner or later it will mm-hmm. happen I mean I, I have a couple of I, I was going to say acquaintances but we chat a lot more now um, actual TTM artists ones that have played them for like 10 years and oh. with lots of stories 
Oh, I can imagine. Lots of stories. I mean, that'll be you soon because you're getting one, aren't you? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Still waiting. Uh, Good right, timing. That is perfect timing. I'm going to go and answer my door. Until next time. Bye, fuckers. <laughs>